Uh, hello, everybody. Andrew Stanley here, uh, talking gang stalking, narrow weapons, and uh, the psychology behind um, why they do it and how they get away with it. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the woman who burned herself on the hot coffee. Uh, it may sound unrelated, uh, but definitely is not. To help you understand the psychology uh, and the structure behind uh, the media and information. Uh, you may remember in the 80s, there was a woman who uh, was severely burned by some hot coffee uh, from a major restaurant chain. Uh, she sued them, and I believe the story in the paper was basically painting this woman like she was, uh, uh, you know, a dishonest person that was trying to get money she didn't deserve. Uh, you know, obviously coffee's hot. What's wrong with this human being? I remember it was all around the newspapers. Uh, it was a national discussion, and we all kind of collectively made fun of her uh, for that. And uh, I, I remember thinking, yeah, what a jerk. You know, obviously, you know, coffee's hot. And I was only 10 years old at the time, but it kind of permeated through culture, um, you know, over the decades. Uh, and just recently, a, a very uh, nice person made a documentary on this and educated us all just a little bit about exactly what happened. Uh, and I'll tie all this together here at the end, of course. Uh, but what really happened, this is a woman that was in her 80s. She was being driven to uh, the doctor's office by her nephew. Uh, they, of course, went to this uh, restaurant drive through and ordered coffee. And the machine had malfunctioned. The thermostat was broken. And it had continued to uh, hold the water, presumably, above the boiling temperature. Um, of course, we don't know the exact. Uh, but it's certainly not supposed to be 212. And it, it sounds like it was higher than that. And the fact is, what happened was it was so hot uh, to the touch that she couldn't hold it. And when she dropped it, uh, it basically boiled her in her seat. Uh, the nephew had a sports car with sort of bucket seats, uh, the sort of a one piece design. And the hot liquid went in there and it was basically like she was sitting in a pot of, of you know, superheated liquid. Uh, she couldn't get herself out of the car by the time he got out and helped her get out because she was elderly. Uh, the damage was done. Second and third degree burns required skin grafts and hospitalization for quite a bit of time. Uh, it was a very serious event for her. Um, it was just an accident. We get it. Um, but, you know, if you're going to go around selling hot beverages, sometimes things happen. And, you know, this is how we learn to maybe uh, redesign the machines or train the employees to pay a little more attention um, to what's going on. So the reason that ties in is because, well, why did we all think what we thought? Well, it was because we now know uh, that people who are interested in tort reform, and that is to limit the liability corporations uh, would be expected to pay uh, should something happen, wanted to change the laws. So what they did was uh, people in uh, basically who were acting on behalf of large corporations through a PR firm put together this story and um, told it in a way that was beneficial for people who wanted to limit liability. So what they did was they made it sound like she was, they sound like this was a frivolous lawsuit and she was a dishonest person. So these PR firms uh, produced this news piece and then they, apparently this was very common and still is, and they offer it to all of the newspapers. Now remember back then in the 80s, newspapers still existed. You know, there weren't five major ones, they were everywhere. So uh, you can imagine they, they simply, uh, contact news agencies and offer them this pre-made, pre-fab news story. And editors love it because they don't have to pay somebody to do the work. They'll yeah, send it over, great, copy, paste, and it goes, out it goes. Just like that. My point is, when I make a lot of if-then statements, the media as a whole, from your local tiny newspaper all the way up to your major networks, told this lie, slandered this elderly woman who was the victim of negligent uh, manufacturing or behavior, whatever you want to call it. They slandered her. They made her look like she was a liar. They called her an outright liar and a money-grubbing person, and that was not true. Now, I don't know if the networks and the newspapers truly understood it. They probably didn't. It was just fed to them. They took it, sounded good, filled up a spot in the newspaper, filled up a spot in the evening news, and they went with it. The point is, if then, if they were willing to look the other way on something like this and or tell that lie, and let that lie persist and exist for decades until someone finally set the record straight, what else would they be willing to lie about? Recently with the Jeff Epstein story, um, 
we learned that one of the major networks had uh, anchors wanted to do a piece on this and they squashed it three years ago uh, because they didn't want to end up on the bad side of some of the people that Epstein was palling around with. And I'm not going to name names here, but we all know who they are. Um, you know, people from various political parties, both of them, you know, no one's, no one's hands are clean on this one. And they squash the story. Well, so that means the news networks knew that underage girls were being sold, literally pushed into uh, sex slavery uh, and, and human trafficking. They looked the other way for money. Well, if they would slander an 80 something year old woman who, who was a victim, if they would squash that story, which could have ended, you know, Epstein's human trafficking three years ago and saved a lot of trauma for these young girls, if they would do those two things, and these are just two examples, then what else would they do? Well, they would certainly look the other way on gang stalking. They would certainly look the other way on uh, microwave weapons and the fray effect. Uh, a lot of the major newspapers did cover what happened to the diplomats uh, at first. Um, but now you're seeing a lot of whitewashing. People are coming forward. Oh, it wasn't that. We think it was a chemical. They're just trying to cover the whole thing up. And the newspapers and the, the networks are just going along with it. And nowadays, with so many fewer new, news networks, uh, newspapers, excuse me, and with the networks being owned by massive companies that also have ties into, uh, you know, they're loosely tied into defense contractors and other things like that, there's no way you're going to get the truth. So when I was kind of learning this and coming to understand it, it was hard to grasp, but now it makes a whole lot more sense. And they really just take the path of least resistance and most money. Um, there's no backbone there. There's no decency. They're not looking out for you. And they're not telling you what you need to hear. And that's how this has gone on as long as it, as it has. Uh, no one's asking the obvious questions. I talk about this in my videos. Uh, the opioid crisis, mass shootings. Uh, childhood ADD, the fact that everybody's got anxiety and depression, everybody's on pills and drugs, our healthcare costs are through the roof. Those are all because of the fray effect. Those are all because of exposure to microwaves, not microwave ovens. For people that don't know what they're talking about, pulsed microwaves in the microwave band uh, called the fray effect. Smart people know, they've been talking about it for a long time, no one wants to listen. That helps you understand just how easy it is to control media because they really have no interest. They look the other way on a, a woman being burned. They look the other way on children being sold into slavery. What else would they look the other way on? Uh, I would say it's quite a bit and it is uh, just to help you understand how things work a little bit. Give you my perspective. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, best of luck. Educate yourself. Uh, look into the fray effect and uh, thank you.